In this video, we'll be focusing on how we can factor trinomials using the grouping method. So this is going to work for any trinomial where the leading coefficient is 1 or not 1. So we're going to talk about how we can apply what we've already learned with um, factoring trinomials and applying it to this new um, type of factoring. So let's review. We always want to remember to check for the GCF first. So when we're looking at this first example here, we have a coefficient of 1, 1, and then we have a constant of negative 42. So between all of those, there are no GCFs, there are no X terms that we can factor out. So we're going to use our shortcut method that we learned before, where we're looking for factors of negative 42 that add to positive 1, and that would be positive 7 and negative 6. If we add those together, we get negative 1, and, or sorry, positive 1, and when we multiply them, we get negative 42. In the next one, we see that each of these coefficients are even, so we can factor out a 2, and then they each have at least 1x in them, so we can factor out 2x. That would mean we'd have to be left with x minus 4 in the parentheses here to distribute and get back to what we started with. So we're going to keep that GCF method in mind while we continue working through our new methods, because sometimes it makes our problem a little bit easier if you can factor out a GCF before you um, try to apply the grouping method. So when we're looking for or looking at trinomials where the leading coefficient now is no longer just a 1, we need to um, figure out what we're going to do and what factors we're looking for since it's not a 1. So looking at this first example where we have our um, 2x squared plus 5x plus 3, it's going to be very similar to what we did, but the first step is just a little different. So rather than finding factors of 3, we're going to take 2 times 3 here, which gets us 6 and then we're still going to use that middle coefficient of 5. So we want to find factors of 6 this time that add to 5. So just that one extra first step here that's going to make um, our first step a little bit different. So we're looking for numbers that multiply to 6 but add to 5. So that would be 3 and 2. And now at this point, we want to write this out as a um, polynomial with 4 terms here. So 2x squared is going to stay exactly what it is. What we want to use is take the two numbers that we just found, 3 and 2, and we want to break up what 5x is going to be written as. So I'm going to write that down here. We can say, well, that's the same as if we took 3x plus 2x, and that would make 5x. I'm going to bring down the plus 3 and set it all equal to 0. So all I've done on this step is I have um, broken up that middle term of 5x. So now we're going to use our grouping method. And when we do this, we're basically trying to just look at this um, polynomial in two little parts and see if we can find the GCF of each binomial term here. So in the first set of two terms, we have 2x squared plus 3x. Well, there's no GCF of 2 and 3, um, but we can say that x would be that largest value that we can take out. So that would leave us with 2x plus 3 left inside. And what that means is if I took x times 2x and x times positive 3, I would get back to what I had above here. Now we're going to repeat the process on the other side of this polynomial. And what I'm really trying to go for each time is whatever I got in here, I want it to show up again over here. So what would I have to multiply 2x plus 3 by to get this statement up here, which is just 2x plus 3? Well, I would just have to multiply it by 1. So that gets me that same expression inside both of those binomials. If I check, if I multiplied this by 1, I would get back to what I had above. And so now putting this all together, what this is really representing is if we were to take x plus 1, which is coming from my x that I'm distributing here and my plus 1 that I'm distributing here. So that's my first binomial. And my second binomial that I've distributed that to is 2x plus 3. So now this becomes my fully factored form of what I started with. Now if you're not sure, you can always go back and FOIL to see what you would get. So I'm going to pause on my factoring here and just show you why this works. If I were to FOIL this, I would take x times 2x. Well, I did that up here, right? Then I would take my outer term, so x times 3. And that's what I did here. Then I would take my inner term, so 1 times 2x. I did that here and 1 times 3, and that's what I did over here. So when I expanded it into this kind of grouping method step right here, all I was doing was basically kind of showing that distributive property of what FOIL does, but what we better know as those steps of FOIL. So it kind of 
explaining why that FOIL sh shortcut works. It's just double distribution there. So this is now all equivalent to what we started with. We're just now in fully factored form, which helps us finish to solve the problem to actually get what our x values are. So at this point, we have two binomials. They're factors of this quadratic, and we're going to set them equal to 0. And when we do this, x could be negative 1 or x could be negative 3 halves. And both of those are solutions to our quadratic. So I'll, set, I'll take you through the next one. And then if you want to try the bottom two on your own, you can pause the video and give them a shot before you listen to the explanation. So for our next problem, remember we're starting with our leading coefficient of 2 times our constant of negative 7 here. So that means we're going to be looking for factors of negative 14. Then I'm looking for my constant in the middle, which is positive 13. So the two factors that I can use there will be 14 and negative 1. If I multiply 14 times negative 1, I get negative 14, and 14 minus 1 gets me 13. So that's going to work to set up our grouping method. So at this point now, we're going to just rewrite our um, trinomial as a polynomial. So we're just going to be using these two numbers that we found and rewriting the problem. So 2t squared comes down plus I'm going to write 14t and negative 1t and minus 7 equals 0. So what we did is we just broke up that 13t into positive 14t minus 1t and all we did is just bring down that 2t squared and negative 7, right? Those are all just coming down. We're rewriting this. This allows us to use our grouping method and kind of split this up into two parts of our expression here on the left side. So we're focusing on 2t squared and 14t. Well, what are the, what's the greatest, co or greatest common factor there? I see 2 and t that could be factored out of each of those terms. So t plus 7 is what I've got left there. So 2t squared plus 14t. If I distributed that 2t out, that's what I would get to. Now remember, the goal is, just like in the last one, we're trying to recreate whatever we just got in here we should be able to put right in here and there's something that we can multiply it by to get it back to what we have up top. So I'm going to put 2 or t plus 7 here and see if there's something that works there. Well, I want a negative 1 times t, so that would mean I'd have to multiply t by negative 1. And I want a negative 7, so if I took negative 1 times positive 7, that would get me back to my negative 7. So that looks like it's going to work there for us. So our final step then to break this up into our two factors is to look at what we've distributed. We took 2t and we distributed it to t plus 7. We also took negative 1 and distributed that to t plus 7. So since we're taking those two separate terms and distributing to the same binomial, my two separate binomials oops, will become 2t minus 1 times t plus 7. And that's all equal to 0 there. And what we want to do is actually write that a little bit closer together here because they are multiplying. So we want to make sure that we're showing that they're multiplying together there. And remember, if you are not sure if you got it right, you can always FOIL at this step to see whether that is equal to what we started with. Last step to get our actual values for t will be to set them both equal to 0. So 2t minus 1 equals 0 and t plus 7 equals 0. So this will get us t equals 1 half and t equals negative 7. So there's our two solutions to our problem. So if you think you're ready to try it, go ahead and pause the video and press play when you're ready to check the next two. For the next one, I don't see any GCFs to start in my terms, so I'm going to take 4 times 2, and those are the numbers that I'm going to multiply together to get factors. I want factors of 8. They need to add to positive 9. So that's not too bad, just 8 times 1 will work there. So we're going to rewrite this expression as 4m squared plus 8m plus 1m plus 2, and that will equal 0. All I did, remember, is just expand my 9m expression into 8m plus 1m. So now we can use our grouping method and split this up into two parts. So my greatest common factor of the first half is 4m, and I'm left with m plus 2 in the parentheses. And then on the other side, I have 1m plus 2. So all I will need to do is just multiply m plus 2 times 1 there. So that means my two binomials that I get when factoring are 4m plus 1 and m plus 2. And we'll set those both equal to 0 in order to finish solving our 
equation here. So 4m plus 1 equals 0 gets us m equals negative 1 fourth, and m plus 2 equals 0 will get us m equals negative 2. In the last example on the front here, we have 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. Again, no GCFs here, so we can't factor anything out at the beginning. We multiply our first and last number here, so 2 times 3 is 6, and they're going to need to add to negative 7. So that means we're going to be multiplying negative 6 and negative 1 together. So first step, rewrite your problem using those two numbers we just found, so negative 6x minus 1x plus 3. And then we're going to go ahead and um, split this up into two parts, factor out our GCF on both sides. So 2x is our GCF, we'd multiply it by x minus 3. Then I have negative 1x plus 3. And I'm going for, I want that x minus 3 to be in my parentheses because it needs to be that same binomial if we're going to use the grouping method correctly. So I would need to multiply by negative 1 to get negative 1x and to get positive 3 then to get back to what we had up top. So that means my two binomials that I'm getting out of here is 2x minus 1 times x minus 3. That equals 0. We'll take them both and set them equal to 0. And our two solutions then will be x equals 3 and x equals 1 half. So now we're going to apply this method to some of our geometric models. So in this first example, you're given that the lines R and S are parallel. Remember when we see the arrows on the lines, that denotes that they're parallel. We've got this transversal cutting through for line Q, and it's creating these eight different angles. So we learned a bunch of angle pairs earlier in the year, knowing that when lines are parallel, certain angle relationships exist. So we're given the measure of angle two and angle three. Well, angle two and angle three are just vertical angles, so we know that they can be, um, con they'll be congruent to each other. So we're gonna set them equal to one another, 2x squared minus 5x equals three. Now because I see this um, 2x squared here, I know I'm gonna have a quadratic, so I need to set this equal to zero to solve. So I'll start by subtracting three from each side. I'll get 2x squared minus 5x minus three equals zero. Then we're gonna use our grouping method that we learned on the front. Two times negative three is negative six, and I want factors of negative six that add to negative five. So the factors for us are, that are gonna work are gonna be negative six and positive one there. So we're gonna write 2x squared minus 6x plus x, or plus 1x there, minus three equals zero. We'll split it in half and do our grouping method here. So the GCF of 2x squared and 6x is gonna be 2x, and that leaves us with x minus three in the parentheses, plus one times x minus three, because if I multiply one times x minus three, I get back to that original um, equation above. So now my two expressions that I have are 2x plus 1 and x minus 3. And those are multiplying together in order to make our original equation. So now that they're being multiplied together and they're set equal to 0, we can go ahead and solve. So 2x plus 1 equals 0 will get us x equals negative 1 half. And then x minus 3 equals 0 gets us x equals 3. Now when we go ahead back and look at our two examples here, um, if we plugged in a negative one half, that would end up getting us a positive value here. So that works. If we plug in a positive three, um, we can also get a positive value there. So we should end up getting two values that are positive and they won't make any negative angle measures, which is something we want to look out for when we are solving quadratics in these geometric applications. You can go ahead and pause the video and press play if you want to try the next one. We have measure of angle 3 and angle 5 this time. So 3 and 5 are both on the same side of the transversal between parallel lines, so those are consecutive interior angles. So we learned that when the lines are parallel, the consecutive interior angles will be supplementary. So we can add these two expressions together and set them equal to 180. So right away, that's going to take our geometry rule and apply it to um, this example. And now we're going to go ahead and solve for x by using our grouping method because we see that leading coefficient of 3. So what that means is we need to set this equation equal to 0. 
So if I were to combine my like terms on the left, I'd have positive 182, but then I would subtract 180 from each side. So my new trinomial ends up being 3x squared plus 5x plus 2 equals 0. And this is where we can go ahead and factor. So I'm going to be looking for factors of 6, which is what I get when I do 3 times 2, that add to 5. Well, 3 and 2 work for that, so let's split it up. We have 3x squared plus 3x plus 2x plus 2 equals 0. We'll use our grouping method to split our equation in half here. Factor out a 3x up front, which means we'll be doing x plus 1 over here plus factoring out a 2 on this other side and being able to multiply by x plus 1 again. So remember we want that to match. That means my two binomials are 3x squared, or sorry, 3x plus 2 times x plus 1. x plus 1 there. All right, so now they're both equal to 0 and we are going to solve. So 3x plus 2 equals 0 will get us x equals negative two-thirds, and x plus one equals zero will get us an answer of x equals negative one. And once we do that, if we look back at our examples here, the negative two-thirds value will still allow us to get that um, positive angle measure, and so will our answer of negative one. Um, so we're still able to use both of those as solutions. In our last two examples for today, we're looking at the three angles in a triangle that are represented with expressions. So knowing that we have three angles inside of a triangle tells us that we are going to be adding to 180 because that is always our sum of angles inside of a triangle. So we're going to start each of these problems off by taking each angle measure of 1, 2, and 3, adding them together, and setting them equal to that sum of 180. Once we do that, because these both have our x squared values in them, we want to make sure that we combine like terms, factor out our GCF, and then set equal to zero. So combining like terms, we get 3x squared plus 14x, and then subtracting 180 from the side and combining with the terms we already had, we're left with minus 5. So at this point, no GCF to factor out. Multiply 3 times negative 5. So we want factors of negative 15, and we want those factors to add to positive 14. So the best solution for that will be 15 times negative 1. We'll split up our trinomial into a polynomial by writing 3x squared plus 15x minus 1x minus 5 equals 0. At this point, remember we can split up our equation into two parts. We'll factor out 3x and x plus 5 is what we'll be left with, minus 1 times x plus 5. And that breaks us up into the two binomials that we need to factor here. So we have 3x minus 1 times x plus 5, both equal to 0. And when we solve these two individual equations, 3x minus 1 equals 0 will get us a solution of positive 1 third, which will definitely work in our diagram. And then we also get a solution of x equals negative 5. And when we look at that, um, we would have negative 5 squared, so 25, and then multiplied by 3. Um, that's going to be enough to stay positive. And um, 12 times negative 5 is negative 60, which also keeps that um, expression completely positive. So leaves us with three angles with positive values. So both of those solutions will work in our triangle application. Go ahead and pause the video and try the last one. Press play when you're ready to check. We have 3x squared minus x plus 50, negative x squared plus 40, and 89 as the three angles in a triangle. So since they're all angles in a triangle, we know that their sum must be 180 degrees. We'll add these all together and set them equal to that sum of 180. Combining like terms and setting our equation equal to 0 is going to leave us with 2x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. That means we're looking for factors of negative 2 this time, because 2 times negative 1 gets us that, and negative 1 is what we're adding to. So the best solution here will be negative 2 times positive 1, and then we're going to rewrite our um, trinomial as a polynomial. So 2x squared, and we're going to rewrite this as negative 2x plus 1x minus 1 equals 0. We're going to split up our equation into two parts over here. 
and factor out our GCF. So I see a negative 2x as a GCF up front, and that will get us x minus, sorry, plus 1, not minus, and then plus 1 times x plus 1. Actually, we need to subtract there so that we're getting that um, My bad. We should have taken out, let's see. Let's start that over. So we have 2x right here that we can factor out. GCF, greatest common factor. We don't want to pull out a negative. If we can pull out a positive, that was my mistake. I apologize. We'll pull out an, a 2x, so that'll leave us with x minus 1 in here. Then if I pull out a positive 1 here, x minus 1 is what we're left with. So those match. So what I did there is I accidentally pulled out that negative GCF. Um, negative 2 is smaller than positive 2x, so the GCF is truly positive 2x and not negative. So I should not have pulled out that negative value. So all we need to do at this point is just write our two binomials that are being multiplied, 2x plus 1, x minus 1, and those are both set equal to 0. So we get x equals negative 1 half and x equals 1. Now if we look at that negative one-half value, um, there's no risk of that being too many negatives here in either of these expressions if we were to plug them in. So we will end up with positive values. And then same with our x of 1, we're not going to end up with any negative angles. So both of these can be solutions even in our geometry application.